Namaste, it's Sahara Rose, and welcome back to the Highest Self Podcast, a place where we discuss what makes you your soul's highest evolvement. And before we get started, I have an announcement for you. So on my own spiritual journey, I realized that I wasn't resonating with more information. I always felt like there was another book, another thing to do, another way to become. And I was really yearning for a form of spirituality that invited my whole self, my femininity, my creativity, my desire to be in my physical body, in my pleasure, in my joy, in my heart, in my womb, in my dance. For me, spirituality is not about leaving the body, but really about being so immersed in it that you become one with it. So this month in Rose Gold Goddesses, the Sacred Sisterhood Collective, all about embodying the goddess within, we are diving deep into Shakti, which is this principle, this essence of divine feminine wisdom. I take you on a journey to learn about how Shakti shows up in you, how she is your breath, your body, your desire to be immersed in all things rather than separate from it. We dive deep into the differences between spirit and soul, and I guide you through practices and rituals to connect more to the Shakti essence that lives inside of you. The path of the goddess is not to detach yourself from the world enough that you can handle being in it, but rather creating the world you desire to be a part of. And that is what we are doing this month in Rose Gold Goddesses. So if this is calling your name, you're seeking to make dance and embodiment your spiritual practice, then come join us in this Rose Gold Goddesses circle. It is included in your membership at rosegoldgoddesses.com, or you can try it on its own at rosegoldgoddesses.com slash Shakti. You can find those links in the show notes, and I'm super excited to invite you inside. I can't believe today is the last day of 2020. It's been a great 15 years, (laughs) y'all. What a year. I honestly have been just reflecting back on this year. I'm like, y'all, what the fuck happened? (laughs) What happened? I was just, I just did a lot of TikTok this year. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. But it's been an amazing year. And even though it's been the most challenging for myself, I can say it's also been the best year of my life. And I don't mean that I haven't had any obstacles or struggles. I literally thought my whole family was going to die because they got coronavirus in March. And I thought that everyone who got coronavirus would die thanks to mainstream media. So that prompted me into a lot of deep healing around my family, thinking that I would genuinely never see them again and doing deep family constellations work and ancestral healing and writing letters to them of all the things I wish I could have said and the way that I wish our relationship was different and, and, literally thinking I was going to have to let go of these people. And then they basically got a flu and are still fine, but that healing needed to happen. So it has been a challenging year. It has been an an unpredictable year. It has been a year that I keep saying my motto for this year is you can plan a pretty picnic, but you can't predict the weather. And that's really what it has taught us more than anything. Like, do y'all remember how excited everyone was for 2020? (laughs) I mean, I remember I was giving this talk at, at Mind Body Green in October of 2019. I was like, 2020 is the year of the visionary. We are moving forward with 2020 vision. What are you going to do? You're going to catapult your way to your dharma. And the thing is, even though that feels like, oh girl, no. And of course I didn't know it was coming, but that's still true. It actually was the year that catapulted us towards our dharma and not in the way we thought it would. And that's what I really want to share in today's episode, how how we can feel our purposes and feel where it's directing us, but the universe will give us the exact experiences we need to actually learn those lessons and embody them. And every person's timeline is going to be unique. You know, 2020 has shown us that one global event such as the coronavirus can feel so similarly to all of us, all of us experiencing those same shadow aspects, fear of survival, fear of death, feel of loss of freedom or sense of control, and manifest so differently for people based off of their mindset, based off of their perceived lens of this world. 
So something that I've been really diving into this year and talking about on the podcast throughout this quarantine, which to me is still such a funny word, like a quarantine. Like, could you imagine if last year I was like, we're going to quarantine. You're like, Wait, what? Isn't that like in the medieval days when they would like not leave their dungeons for a while, but it's like, we're still technically in the, in the quarantine. But I've been really sharing a lot about timelines and timelines are basically trajectories of where your life can go. How I see them are different pathways that that your dharma, your soul's purpose can take you. And as someone who is an expert on dharma, on your soul's purpose, has a new book coming out called Discover Your Dharma, I always see things as the lens through, is this bringing me closer to my dharma or further away from it? Because the real reason why we are here is to live our purpose is everything else is great and beautiful and important and to me, come secondary to you living your soul's purpose because true happiness can only come when you are in utmost alignment with your purpose. And that doesn't mean you have to have a special career or fame or money or any of those things. However, it does require you knowing that you are here for the reason you were meant to. And that could be you living in a farm. That could be you having kids. That could be you creating a company or writing a book or starting a blog. But knowing that you are living and sharing your gifts on a daily basis, that is the purpose of this life. Now, we were all born with a purpose. It was encoded inside of us. And I really shared the process more in Discover Your Dharma. And I've spoken about it before, so I won't go super into that. But Your purpose is within you. You know it. You were born knowing, but to incarnate on this planet, you agreed to the temporary amnesia. So basically to forget everything it is that you are so you can go through the journey and go through the process of remembering again. And that journey prepares you for the actual embodiment of it. That's at least how I see it and more through a Vedic lens. Now, the timelines you take are essentially the different ways that your free will can manifest in relation to your destiny. So let's say your destiny, your purpose is to live in relation to your dharma. So maybe it's for you to use your gifts as the entertainer or the nurturer or the warrior. And I have all of these archetypes. I had created these nine dharma archetypes written for you in Discover Your Dharma. And I have a quiz called the dharmaarchetypequiz.com to help you find yours. So you are encoded with that. That is a part of you. However, the different timelines you can take may bring you off that path or may take longer, right? So let's say we all are going on this cruise and we're going from, you know, we're going from California to Hawaii, right? So we have to go through the Pacific. Now, some of us may just take a straight line of like, here's where I'm going. I'm not wasting any time. This is what I was meant to do here. And just just go for it. Now, there could still be waves and thunderstorms and things that can knock you off, but you're always moving directly towards it. Now, that's you totally knowing your dharma, but most of us, we we go on different pathways. Some of us may steer all the way up to the North Pole only to turn around then and come back down. Some of us may make it down to Australia and then come back. Some of us may spiral a little bit, may end up in a, di- a different area. Maybe you end up in like Fiji or something else. You, you went a little too far, you have to go back. So There's so many directions our boat can take, even though all of us, our dharma was in Hawaii, let's say. Now, these represent the different timelines that we could take. We can we can be direct, we can loop around, we can go somewhere totally else. Maybe you needed the experience of going to the North Pole, you needed you needed something from there, you need to gain that strength, you need to experience the cold, maybe you need to go to Australia, have more of that culture in your life. So it doesn't always mean it's a bad thing to have gone a different path. Sometimes you needed to experience something totally different to prepare you, to give you the lessons, to give you the experiences that you needed so you can fully anchor into your dharma. Now, knowing that there are so many different timelines, so many different pathways, and that also not all of them end up in the Hawaii, in the dharma land, some of them actually, you you may just end up in the North Pole and stay there and it's not where you want to go. And then you're like, I thought this life was supposed to be Hawaii and it's the North Pole. And some of us end up just getting lost on sea and never finding the land again. And some of us end up going back to California where we started and just trying to hold on because it's too scary to try to make it out to Hawaii. So again, not everyone is going to fully make that voyage. In fact, in our society, because of the 
dissension that has happened, the vibrational dissension, meaning people forgetting their magic and their power and their creatrix abilities, the majority of people at this time are remaining exactly where they were or they spiral out a little bit. Maybe they try something and then they fail that first time and think it's not for them and they go back to where they were. So we're living in a world that it's normalized. It's normalized to not make the voyage. It's normalized to give up. It's normalized to quote unquote, play it safe, even though that's, there's no real safety in doing that. It's a perceived sense of safety. It's just like what this year has taught us is like, you could try to do all the things, but we're never going to be totally safe from all of the potential harms of this planet. Like a meteor could hit us at any time. Like we have to be realistic that being on this planet includes an element of risk. And this life, you know, some of us look at this life of how can I just avoid as much risk as possible? And that perspective of looking at life is a perspective of survival. Now, again, some people's lifetimes are really about survival. My parents, so many people, it was just about how do I survive? And if you're listening to this podcast, you're at a point of your consciousness where you're seeking more than that. And Maslow's hierarchy, which was a a famous cognitive psychologist, he looked at it as a hierarchy of once you have your basic needs met, your survival needs met, then you go for the luxuries, the things that you just want. I want a more comfortable bed. I want a bigger or newer laptop, et cetera. But then you realize those things don't fulfill you either. And you could manifest all the abundance you want, but if you're living a life out of alignment with your purpose, none of it actually matters. So then you start to ask the even bigger questions of, why am I here? How can I truly make the best use of my time and be of service to humanity? And that's really what this lifetime is about. And again, not all of us get there, but if you're listening to this, your soul is ready for it. So these timelines can show us all the different pathways and all of the different voyages. And if you really think about an ocean, there aren't lanes on the ocean. It's not like I'm either going like one of three directions. There are infinite And sometimes when you think you are going straight in an ocean, you're not realizing the riptide is actually pulling you in one direction. So you may think too, I'm going straight for my Dharma, but it's actually taking you somewhere else. So the only way for us to be stronger, to be more clear, to be more direct with what our purposes are is to get on that boat, set our sail and trust that we are moving with the ocean, not to be at odds with it, not to try to dominate the ocean, but trust that the ocean's also taking us where we need to go as well. So this year has really taught us that there are so many pathways, there are so many ways, but really one quantum reality can look so different depending on the lens and the person. So Now that we really have this awareness of how 2020 has shown us that we could take a year of obstacles and turn it into the best years of our lives, or we can remain in victimhood and continue to make it the worst day of our lives, then we are faced with the decision of how we want to see the world in 2021. What lessons do we want to take from 2020? What big decisions have we made this year that are going to set us up on a different timeline? And really one decision could be all it takes for you to end up in a totally new trajectory of your life. You know, one decision could be, I don't feel comfortable in my home anymore. I don't like it here. And that next decision can be, I'm going to search for other places to live. And that next decision can be, I'm going to choose between, you know, Vermont or Canada. And that next decision can be finding the place and then moving there and then being in a whole new frequency, which is going to expose you to new ideas, new elements, new people, a new side of yourself, an entirely new timeline that you may not have experienced or may have taken you much longer to get to. So this year has taught us that there are so many ways to get to where we are meant to go and we can trust and move swiftly. We can move when the pull is gravitating us there or we can wait and resist and hold on. And then maybe end up making that decision anyways, but in a more painful way. So, you know, a really clear example of something like this is is a breakup. We can all imagine that time that maybe you were in a relationship and you could feel like, okay, this isn't really bright, or I'm not sure if this is the person for me, or I'm feeling like I'm falling out of love with this person. And 
you just don't listen and it gets worse and you don't listen until it hits you. And maybe it hits you that you just blurt it out, or maybe it hits you through a circumstance that you have no choice but to now turn away from, such as a cheating experience. But you knew yourself that this was meant to happen and you had the nudge for it much earlier, but you chose to take action when you did. Now, maybe it was exactly when it was meant to, or maybe it it could have been a little bit earlier, but that's when you needed to get to because that's what required for you to take action. So that's an example of the timeline is you were meant to break up because maybe there's someone better out there for you. Maybe you're meant to move. Maybe just your karmic ties are finished, but are you going to take the timeline of spending the next 10 years together in agony or five years or one year or right now? So this shows our free will. And I think that sometimes when we get into spirituality, we just kind of throw up our hands and we just think, oh, if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. But That's why we are living gods. We are living gods and goddesses because we have the power of creation within us. It's not something that is guided from this external being out there who's like maneuvering us. We are the gods and the goddesses. And you can also believe in an external God as well. But I think every ancient religion, including, you know, Kabbalah and ancient Christianity, Sufism, etc., they would all say the same thing, that you are divinity in human form. So that means that you have the power to create the masterpiece of your life. Now, every moment is an opportunity and an initiation. So now with that mindset, how are you going to show up in 2021 differently? How are you going to navigate? What direction are you going to set your sail in? And what will be your signs to know when to maneuver? I think it's important for us because sometimes we can set a sail towards a direction and then that direction is not for us. And to also know if it starts to feel really, really painful, it's okay for me to move to. So this year has been a year of showing us the possibilities, the opportunities, the perspectives, the multi-layeredness of all things, how one moment, one event can have millions upon millions of different experiences and layers around it. And that truly you are the one who gets to decide. You are the one who gets to choose, is this obstacle going to give me an opportunity to make a decision that could have taken me much longer? Is this one that I'm going to fight through? Is this one that I'm going to follow? That requires your intuition. So I share this, and this is kind of a more, you know, metaphysical episode, but we got to look at things from a higher bird's eye perspective because it's only when we zoom out that we can get out of our own immediate stories and actually allow the larger realizations to come through us. These larger realizations being, again, those decisions that could have taken you much longer to make, but when you're able to see the full timeline, it becomes so clear. So again, do the practices that help you zoom out. Maybe it's meditation, it's dance, it's taking a walk, it's doing your dishes, but continue doing them. And honor, trust those nudges, trust those downloads, trust those uncomfy feelings. And then feel into, am I wanting to continue moving towards here because it's expanding me? Or am I trying to prove something to myself that's no longer in alignment with who I am? And that right there is the difference. And that right there is the secret sauce to life. So I have plenty of more and analogies on this in my book, Discover Your Dharma. So check it out. And this month we have our new Rose Gold Goddesses Circle coming up for the month of January, which is all diving into the goddess that we'll be working with this month. Every single month we're working with a new goddess archetype energy. So This January, if you've been waiting to join Rose Gold Goddesses, this is the perfect time to join. We're so excited to have new members, to be able to connect in a deeper way and support each other in discovering our dharmas and moving through this shift. We also have a group in there to create your own dharma support pod. So these are essentially little pods like masterminds of you and four people where you can meet every two weeks on a Zoom call and really hold space for each other, 15 minutes each person, talking about your dharma, what's showing up for you, 
what lessons you've learned, what things you've tried, what feedback you've gotten, and just to really support each other with three other soul sisters who are also in alignment with their dharma. So head over to rosegoldgoddesses.com to get more info on that. We're so excited to meet you in there. Thank you so much for incarnating on this planet with me at this time. I am so grateful for you and I hope you enjoy the book. Bye. Thank you.